the next lesson, action and drama. Now, we've already discussed how to prepare and book a drama audition. But what happens when you throw in stunts and special effects and crazy makeup? Listen in and find out. I'm really excited to have actor Willard Pugh here today to talk to us about his experiences in the business, not only as uh, a comedy actor, but also drama. You've done a number of films. Please share with us some of the stuff that you've I'm done. A, Color Purple, RoboCop, Air Force One, CB4, Made in Heaven, Native Son, TV movies, Martin, Magruder and Lau, TJ Hooker, The Fall Guy, just Hill Street Blues was yeah. my first big break. So tons and tons of, and commercials. Yes, we've worked on a commercial Actually, together. Actually, we worked on a commercial we together. We sure did. FedEx. <laughs> yes, yes, and a film. Best boss in the world. Right. <laughs> so, Casper Van Dien, how are you today? I am great, how are you? I am great, it's really lovely to be talking to you. What do we know you from? Give us some of the highlights of your career. Highlights of my career, probably Starship Troopers, I was Johnny Rico, and Sleepy Hollow with Johnny Depp, Tim Burton directing, and Tarzan, they would be my biggest things that I've done so far. Nice. So one of the questions I like to ask our interviewees is why? Why did you become an actor? What, what was it that motivated you? What drove you? You know, and is it the, still the same thing that drives you today? Um, why? I think certain people are born to do certain things. And entertainment is what I was born to do. I've been entertaining since I was probably five years old. I used to sing and do pl uh, shows on my front porch and entertain my neighbors. I was in theater since I was a little kid, Memphis Children's Theater out of Tennessee. I did that for uh, oh, probably 10 years from elementary school to high school. And so that's to me was what I was kind of born to do. I didn't choose uh, acting or entertainment, it chose me. And to me, that's one of the biggest keys. A lot of people now, they choosing it. it, it chose me. Do you have a why? for why you started acting? Yeah, you know, when I was seven years old and, and younger, my parents introduced me to, you know, movies and, and I got, uh, I just got hooked. I just started watching all different films and, I, and I'd see who, uh, I started getting into who was directing certain films. At age eight, I started, I asked my dad, who directed this? And, you know, which isn't a normal question you ask a guy that was in the military right. who was, you know, he, he liked films and everything. He was a huge Tarzan fan, but, uh, it just wasn't something that you know he knew, but he he took me to see different films. He took me to see off Broadway and Broadway productions. My mom and dad did, and then uh, uh, then I'd go I'd go kicking and screaming and come back singing and dancing because uh, I grew up in Jersey. So, um, <laughs> and then I I just uh, I just would I don't sleep much, so I watch a lot of films, okay. and I just loved them. So how did you get your start? What was the, you know, what your, was your in? How did that all begin for you? Coming up out of Memphis with Stax Records, Rufus Thomas, people like that. Um, the Queen of Soul came out of Memphis. <laughs> so I was born in a, in a world of entertaining people. Unfortunately, my mom and my dad, they were not into entertainment. So coming out of that and then going to college, uh, I went to Webster College Conservatory in St. Louis for two years. They kicked me out. They said I wasn't good enough for the program, but so did Marsha Mason. Marsha Mason got kicked out and won an Oscar. Right. So I'm in good company. <laughs> it's better to be kicked out to graduate. Right. <laughs> okay. So, you know, uh, so th those are the things that got me started. And when I got to California, my big break was actually uh, 1982. I did Hill Street Blues, played the PCP Attic. I got considered for a uh, Emmy on my first job. Wow. So... After that, the jobs just start coming. Trapper John, T.J. Hooker, the Fall Guy, Magruder and Lau, Cagney Lacey. You know, just, they just start coming right behind each other. So Atlanta Child Murders. We got to work with uh, James Earl Jones and Morgan Freeman. So, you know, just once the door opens, the phone started ringing and didn't stop. Well, I was going to go in the military and I was going to be a doctor. That's yeah. what I was going to yeah. do. I wanted to be a doctor too, so. That's, that's amazing. Mm -hmm. um, so I went to Florida State and I started um, I was going to do all my pre-med classes, and I took theater because, well, it was an all. Florida State was three girls to every guy, and, okay. and, and theater had more girls in it, and a lot of the guys in it weren't, you know, straight. So I thought my chances of meeting a girl there are pretty awesome. But then I got hooked on the theater, and uh, a guy goes, "You should be a model, Casper." I go, "Yeah, I'm not tall enough." And they're like, "You should just do this." And this one guy's going to this competition. Why don't you go with him? So he goes, "Yeah, you can pay for half the gas." So we went over to this model competition and I won. Oh, wow. And I won commercial talent too. 
So I won the, the runway model and I won the commercial talent. And then all these agents heard about it in, in Florida and they're like, why don't you come out for this commercial audition? I'm like, commercial? Yeah, you can get paid for it if you get one. So I go, okay, I give it a shot. One of my first audition and they go, sing, you have to sing a song and dance. And I'm like, neither of which I do. <laughs> um, but I started like doing, start spreading the news and they all just like looking like, I'm like, okay, this isn't working. So I got up and I sang a reggae song I wrote and they all started singing along with me and they booked me on the show on the commercial. It was for Midway Airlines, and now that airline is defunct, I'm pretty sure it was my commercial. <laughs> um, but I got in the union, they're like, hey, yeah, you can join the union. And I'm like, oh, that's cool, okay. And I'm like, what, do I need to join the union? They're like, yeah, you wanna do that. I'm like, how much does it cost? And it was exactly like the paycheck of what I was getting for the commercial. Wow. I am not spending everything I just earned. <laughs> right, I'm going to that, the and union. Like, no, you have to. So I did, and then this manager heard about me, and he was getting his Magnificent Seven, like Jonathan Taylor Thomas, and Elijah Wood, and me, and a whole bunch of other actors that always work. And uh, he wanted me. And he said, you're going to make it later in your career. That's when you're really going to do it. And they're going to do it right now. And, and, but this, you know, you guys are the people that are going to work for forever, is what he said. As you mentioned earlier, you've done a number of other Oh, yeah, over 30 some films. Right. And I don't know how many TV shows and commercials and right. all kind of stuff. And some of those have been action films. Oh, yeah. How, how has that differed, for, say, from like a drama? What, what's it like when you have to, do you have to do, ever do your own stunts? Or? In the early days, I used to do a lot of my own stunts. And that's some, probably, I think, that's some of the reasons I got a lot of the jobs that I got. Mm -hmm. Because I would actually do the stunts. I, you know, like Hill Street Blues, the guy was a PCP guy. Then doing this martial arts, I had to jump through a window backwards, through this glass and all this stuff. And they got, the cameras were so close, they didn't want to get them in like one take. Right. So, and I was always just good at doing that. And um, uh, Mag I think Magruder and Loud, a hunter, I just had to jump out a window. You know, just always all the action stuff and the car driving. I actually could do it. And were these skills you learned, or the, these the, you skills just, I learned? You just were willing to. Like, oh no! Oh no! Oh, no! Oh, you, no. you had to have the skills. No, I learned to do them because right. I knew in this industry you had to have more than one t talent. These days, people just got one talent. Mm -hmm. When I came into show business, period. You had to be an actor, a singer, dancer. You had to be what we used to call triple threats. Mm -hmm. And then when you, when you got into the movie industry, to me, I had to see where, as an African-American, I could fit in. So when the one rerun, big guy, so I, that wasn't going to be me because it wasn't going to be one. Mm -hmm. So I said, I got to lose some weight, get into this category, and put myself where I can do more things. So I said, if nothing else, I can be a stunt guy. I can do the action. I can actually act. I tried to add as many skills as I could to my repertoire to just make me more uh, in demand. Okay. So I enjoyed the action movies. Uh, uh, what's that movie? The Hills Have Eyes Part Two with Wes Craven. And I had to get an ax put through my head that had to glue it into my little afro and I had to fall out the closet dead. I mean, it was, uh, and it was really me. Right. And I had to do it several times. I mean, so some of the stuff was crazy, but it was fun, you know? It's a little bit different than your sort of run-in-the-mill drama when you're doing action. There's a lot more involved yeah. for you, I think, physically and all I, that as well. I think physical acting is 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 fantastic. It's one of my favorite things. I love uh, physical comedy actors. I think they're amazing. They're they're the best. Uh, but it does take a toll on your body. You get injuries and, and, and you get hurt. Even with stunt doubles that have done a lot of things for me, then they'll still encourage you to do things. And a lot often what will happen with me is uh, somebody would go, hey, would you do that? I'm like, no way. And then go, on camera? And I'm like, yeah! <laughs> <laughs> so I'll do things that I would normally never do. Um, I've, and, and I've done it so many times. And then sometimes I get hooked on it afterwards and I get this adrenaline rush from it. But it's definitely something that, that has ha happened in this, this industry. You, you put your body at risk that, where you might not normally do it. Some people might, but I, I'm not one of those people. But on camera, mm -hmm. uh, for a film, I would totally. When you're doing, say, a horror film, mm -hmm. how do you work opposite like a creature? Like, How does that change your acting? Or how does that change your acting style or techniques that you might use if you have to, say, act against a green screen creature that isn't actually there. But or, that's the only hard part because it's not a real person, but right. that's, a lot of the acting stuff is in your mind anyway. So you have to visualize it, you have to assume that that camera is that monster. It's a technique to what we do, so you gotta learn those little things, you know. So when you're doing action movies, uh, physically being fit and being ready, exercising every day, jumping rope, watching what you eat, watching your diet, um, your body is your vehicle. 
right. that you're performing with. So when I'm doing a film, I don't ride my motorcycles right. because uh, one, the insurance company won't insure you. Right. Um, unless I'm riding a motorcycle in, in the, the movie. movie. Right. <laughs> <laughs> so it's just little things you have to think about. Horses, which I love. Uh, if it's in the movie, I can ride a horse. On the weekend, I can't go riding like I would normally do because if I bounce, hurt, do something, it's a problem. And some stuff you want to say you just don't want to do. Like Color Purple, there was a guy, Greg Elam. What was it Greg? No, Greg came in and took the other guy. I think Alex Brown was the stunt guy because I try to know all my people. That's smart. That's good. He's and uh, names. he uh, fell, and when he hit the table, the table was an old table for real. It splintered and just shot up and sliced him right across his face. So he had to get out, you know. So they had to replace him with another stunt guy. That could have been me if I'd have hit that table when it hit. See right. what I mean? Mm -hmm. So sometimes you really got to think that stuff out before you do, oh, I got to do my own action. I got to do, yeah, they pay people to do that. Is it, is it really the adrenaline rush? Is it just that you get to do things that most people will never get to do? Like to you know, leap tall buildings, jump off of stuff, is it? Yeah, in, in Starship Troopers, I jumped off of a, off of a, a, a little hill, a, you know, 30 feet up in the air onto uh, this platform, which was the tanker bug. Um, and Paul Verhoeven, when he first saw the, the jump, didn't know it was me, and he comes up and goes, I am not letting you do that, that is crazy. And Dickie Beer and Vic Armstrong were like, uh, the, the second unit director and the, and the stunt coordinator were like, uh, that was Casper. And they're like, oh, well then heck, we're shooting it. You know, expletive, expletive, and you know, we're gonna shoot this. And you couldn't even tell with me with that helmet on, you couldn't tell if it was me or the other guys. And then also in Sleepy Hollow, when, when I had to ride the horse down the hill, gallop down the hill with a weapon in one hand and reins and then go over the bridge and then come down and shoot, uh, Tim Burton goes, can you do that? And I'm like, yes, sir. I don't want to ever gallop down a hill <laughs> on a horse. Um, and these were, it's like 17 hands, so it was like really big. My, I'd ridden quarter horses. That was a purebred thoroughbred, and, and, and they're big. And this, what this one was, it was the original Black Beauty from uh, the TV series. So. Wow. It was a magnificent horse. Um, I just got a call to do a Western, and I, they said, you need to ride horses, and, and they got to know how to ride horses. But if you get called to do something, you want to you wanna, you wanna be prepared for it. And so for me, uh, I like to try to do as many things as I possibly can, uh, open up myself to different experiences, play different sports, play different games, and, and just keep myself in fit. Always have a gym membership, always work out, always go on hikes, nice. do whatever you can. Are you someone who prepares a lot when you or about to work on a project, be it drama? I, pre I prepare for everything I do. Drama, comedy, whatever it is. I prepare, period. What, what's part of your preparation process? Like, I, I have an itty bitty part in Atlanta Child Murders, but it was a great uh, chance to work with James Earl Jones, Morgan Freeman. I played a guy named Jimmy Ray Payne, which was one of the first victims that got killed. Jimmy has a mother and a father and family that lived. So then I went to Atlanta and I tried to find as much as I could. I didn't make that much. I probably spent more money going to Atlanta than I was uh, making on a movie. I don't want his parents to look at it and say I did him an injustice. Because at that time, those TV movies were big and everybody's watching. Mm -hmm. You don't want them to see their son in the wrong light. I didn't know the kid. I read articles on him and things, but I tried to at least talk to people that knew him. The parents sometimes, I didn't want to go there because you don't want to, sometimes that's an emotional thing. Mm -hmm. So I try to meet people who kind of knew. That way you can give a semblance of the, a, a feel of the person. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. I can't always, the essence of who they were. Right. I may can't be that person, but I want to give that essence. When I did Rage in Harlem, I'm not a Muslim, but for years afterward, a lot of people thought I was a Muslim. I said, I'm a Laker, my brother. You know, mm -hmm. it's just, I studied the role, I studied the people, I watched them, I read about them because I don't want to do them any injustice on the screen. So that's always been my preparation for every, PCP. I never did PCP, I wasn't no drug person. Right. I went down to uh, LAPD, uh, asked the guy if I could kind of tell him what I was doing, told him I wanted to see when they bring somebody in and what happens and what, and I think I had less than uh, eight hours to get ready for the next day when I went in to meet with the producers to see what those people, I didn't learn about no drugs like that. I've heard it, I've seen other people do it. I want to see, these guys get so strong, their strength is like 10 times the average human. Mm -hmm. So then, after even watching what I saw, now I gotta put my brain to thinking past that level. So I have no threshold for pain when the cops were hitting me or doing whatever they're doing. I have to still, in my mind, keep doing what I'm doing. Mm -hmm. And uh, 
You have to do your homework and do the, do the background on whatever character that it is that you're doing. Just being in a room at home by what you doing all day? Right. What you doing all day? Just sitting up in your house. Mm -hmm. So what are you really learning? I know I used to go to the malls and just watch and study people. Right. Go to restaurants, sit out while I'm having my coffee. I'm watching people because I'm playing those people. If they not go to a club at night, I'm enjoying the club. But guess what? I watch all the people and what they do. So sometimes you're out places, then you log that into your memory, and all those become files that you keep for later. Right. Then you tools can draw from them. Tools in your toolbox. Tools in your toolbox yes. so that later you can draw from them. Yes. It doesn't have to be your own personal experience. Right. It, but you draw. I've dealt with enough people that had all kinds of issues. Mm -hmm. I take their information and their issues, and then sometimes I use them in something that I'm doing. Mm -hmm. I don't have to lay that crap out. Right. I just have to have been exposed to it mm -hmm. to use it. Nice. Aside from the physical aspect of preparation, what kind of, um, not only just script preparation, but just character preparation do you do? Well, script preparation is easy. That's you just, you're, you're rewriting the words, you're learning them, you're doing whatever you can apply to yourself, and then you work with a coach, or you work with another actor, you, you throw it off, and you just practice it different ways. I mean, that's, that's a great way of practicing, but if it's, depending on what kind of role it is, you do as much research as you can on, on the role. Uh, for Tarzan, uh, I read 24 books, all that Edgar Rice Burroughs wrote, he actually wrote 24 and a half. Mm -hmm. And another guy's finished the other one. I never th read that one, but I read all 24 again, because I had read them when I was a kid, because mm -hmm. my dad's favorite character was Tarzan, okay. so that just happened. That's but then I also, awesome. <laughs> I also watched Jane Goodall tapes, because mm -hmm. she did the ape movement, and uh, and then I watched, of course, rewatched Tarzan films and, and did whatever I could to. And that was a lot of physical activity for that one too. That was a lot of running and a lot of working out. And I'd get up at three o'clock in the morning, work from three thirty, work out from three thirty to five thirty, and then I'd be on set all day just doing all the stunts and, and running around doing that. That was crazy. So that film was all that. And Starship Troopers reread Robert Heinlein's book. We did a, a boot camp for that one, but I, luckily I had gone to military school, so I was already I had already learned a lot about weapons. But I worked with Captain Dale Dye, so I got to work with them for that. So we had that kind of prep, and then. Of course, I watched Paul Verhoeven's films all over again because he was the director of that. And so I think the more work you do, I think it can pay off. And the thing that I, I miss most about acting uh, back in the day was that we had a lot more rehearsal time. Right. We used to do a lot, and there's some actors now that um, they go, I don't want to rehearse, I just want to save it for my first experience to be on, on camera because I don't want to lose any of the magic. And I think there's a mistake in that. I think that more magic is created by rehearsing, doing the work and preparation. More discovery each time you do it, right? Yeah. It's the same thing with, with sports. Mm -hmm. You know, Michael Jordan or, or Kobe Bryant or, or LeBron James, they're the first ones on the court, the last ones off the court because, and people are like, oh, they're just so talented and everything, but they're also the most prepared. Mm -hmm. They watch the basketball films, they study the basketball days, they, they do that. Same with acting, you have to study the actors, study the film, study the people that have gone before you, study the people who are directing, writing. You wanna know as much as you can, and I think that's the most important part. You know. The film I did with you, with your husband directing, uh, when they had me play the the not so nice version of myself, right. uh, or the actor actor version, right. and we all have been around those actors. Yes, we have. Um, uh, that's just fun. Uh, it's also challenging just because you're you're playing an aspect of yourself, and people are going to go, "Is he really like that?" And then like, uh, "There's no way." <laughs> But it's, you know, all these pieces are in us, I think. I mean, I'm, not, I'm not an evil person when I played a murderer. I'm not a murderer, but, right. but you know, we, we play these roles. We want to learn as much as we can. So I, like many young black women and aspiring reactors, uh, grew up watching The Color Purple. I mean, it was foundational to my coming of age and an inspiration uh, for me to become an actor. How was it for you playing this iconic figure? I mean, everyone knows you. As Harper. Well, I mean, it, it helped uh, to give me recognition, first of all, so people knew who I was, and then I could get other jobs and uh, things like that. It had good and it bad, because sometimes people want you to play the same character. Mm -hmm. And once you get labeled, I'm Harpo till the day I die. I mean, has it been nice for you to have this iconic character? I say it is because it's uh, uh, garnished me and uh, um, given me a lot of other rewards from just being a part of a, a a movie that was so big, it's history. It'll always be in history. It's in every black beauty shop in America, right. <laughs> okay? And when you go to foreign countries, you see people and like, hapu, hapu, <laughs> and I'm going, who are you talking to? <laughs> <laughs> so uh, it's, it, it makes you internationally famous, world famous, and for a guy coming from Memphis, Tennessee, 
Didn't know nobody really. Nobody in my family is in show business. Nobody else asked. My mother was a school teacher. My father was a freight check for the railroad. To do what I've done, I've over exceeded whatever I thought I was going to do. So right. come on. Really? <laughs> Slap yourself. Get over it. Yeah. <laughs> How's it been for you to uh, play these iconic characters? I mean, Star Starship, Starship Troopers. Troopers is like... I mean, I remember, it's crazy for me, actually, I had a moment while you were talking and I thought, oh my gosh, I remember seeing him when I was, you know, younger, watching this movie, and now, like, you're a dude I hang out with and get to talk to, and, and no, it's, it's really amazing. How is that for you? Starship Troopers is amazing. It's uh, longevity. I read that book when I was 12 years old. Mm -hmm. So when I got to play this iconic character, um, and the way that Paul Verhoeven visualized it, you know, having, you know, he's trying to, to Put, as a lot of Nazi Germany, they went down to South America, and my character is from South America in the book. He's a Filipino South American. Hmm. But what Paul Verhoeven was trying to do was he was, he was pointing at, like, trying to, um, you know, make it all a, a utopia. Everything was supposed to be perfect looking or whatever, right. and so we were all clean cut, and then he wanted to show the contrast of war within that. He also wanted to show, you know, like I think, of like Nazi Germany, people escaping down there and then growing up, and then now they're like, oh no, I'm from Buenos Aires. Right. And you're like, no, you're not, you're not from Buenos Aires. And I went to military school with some guys from South America. Right. Who looked, you know, had blonde, blonde right. hair, Straight blue eyes, and I was, and, and and one of them had a, a German last name, but only spoke Spanish, mm -hmm. and I was just like, that's just wild. Mm -hmm. So uh, I think that's what Paul was trying to say because he grew up, his family fighting the Nazis in World War II. Um, you know, his family was part of the resistance, so it's just wild. So for that to come in and play this kind of character was exciting. Uh, and to work with him. And to this day, with people recognizing me or coming up and going, I saw you in Starship Troopers. I'm, I'm going to a con this weekend and I'm be signing pictures for it. People want to meet me there because of that movie. Right. That's awesome. Anything that gets the fans excited because they're the people that pay the paychecks, they're the people that are interested in it. It's interesting, uh, with cons, people used to go, oh, you know, what do you think of those people that dress up in, in at cons and everything like that? Isn't that ridiculous? And I go, that's what I do for a living. <laughs> Right. Literally what I do for a living. Job. So you're going to think that I think that's ridiculous. I love them. They're amazing. They show up with this passion and they make it themselves and they come and they're like, oh my God, I just love this. So they love films just as much as I do. Right. And I'm saying just as much. Sometimes I know <laughs> sometimes they might know her, but yeah. sometimes no, because yeah. I love films. I live and breathe that. So I completely see and adore their, um, their desire to be a part of it. Do you feel like, you know, you said that these days, People have one talent. Do yeah. you think that if they really, if it, what would you recommend to, 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 to our viewers? You know, would you tell them go ahead and go ahead and learn some other task? What these days? What are those skills you think they should learn, given how mm -hmm. the business is today? If, if you in this business today, you got to learn really everything, mm -hmm. because over my career, I had to learn everything: uh, producing, directing, writing. That's uh, how I started my video business back in 1991 because I didn't have any work. Mm -hmm. I learned to shoot, edit direct, I, I do it all. I had my own equipment, everything. So, and I did that for, God, over so 1991 to maybe 2013 or 2012. Mm -hmm. And so you have to be multi, multi-faceted, multi, multi-talented, because if you don't know lighting and all kind of stuff, I remember sometimes you'd be on a set, especially back in the 80s, they couldn't light African-American people. Mm -hmm. So if you're on a set and there's a guy, there's a white guy and there's a black guy, you are dark. They don't realize you may need to put a bounce board, get a key light. Mm -hmm. Even though that seems simple, sometimes you're doing your whole performance in the dark and you don't even realize it until you see your episode. Right. And that could be any black man in America. Nobody knows it's you. Mm -hmm. So you didn't get an Emmy because you weren't good. Right. You didn't right. get an Emmy because we didn't see you. Right. <laughs> <laughs> so, so, you know, just all the technical portions you need to know. And know your job. Do your job. Execute what you're supposed to execute when it's time to be on screen. Separate your personal stuff from whatever you're doing. And the biggest thing for me, I just don't want to play myself. Like now, to me, everybody playing themselves. People aren't acting. Mm -hmm. People are being themselves. I love being different characters. I like when people don't know I'm in certain movies. Right. They'll say, you in Rage in Harlem? What did you do in Rage in Harlem? I was the Muslim, Claude X. I did a thing called Puppet Master, a horror movie. Uh, I had to shave my head. That's not you. Then they look at, oh, that was you right. on the thing, grab you and choke you off. Oh, yeah. 
That's what acting's about. Mm -hmm. You want to be different people. I just don't want to play myself over and over and over again. Uh, Robocop, worst thing could have happened was that everybody wanted me to keep playing Mary Kuzik, the same guy that I did in Robocop, over and over again. I did that already. Right. So you lose money and uh, jobs from not wanting to repeat those roles. And I'm not mad at the people that do what they do. Certain people, every movie, they're going to be themselves. That's how they're making their money. They're making a lot of money doing it. God bless them. It's just not my thing. Right. I got into acting to act mm. and have new experiences and new adventures. What would you, uh, advice would you give an actor who is starting out and wants to get into the business? Okay. What, what should they do? Well, first of all, I, you have to think really hard about that because if you want to be in the business, if you want to, if you really want to be an actor, you have to, you have to search yourself and go, I'm going to commit to this. There's a lot of rejection. I still get rejected all the time. Uh, I got rejected from being me. There was an audition where one of my friends called up and said, hey, I'm going on an audition for, it says in the breakdown, looking for a Casper Van Dien type, must look and sound just like Casper Van Dien. Called up my manager, my manager called them and they said, and he said, I got Casper Van Dien. They go, we don't want him. Huh. I couldn't even audition for myself. <laughs> I was like, that was like 10 years ago. So right. it's not like I was old. I was like, you know, it was like we just didn't want him. They didn't want a younger or anything else. Like they just didn't want me. So there's the four stages of acting. There's Who's Casper Van Dien? Get me Casper Van Dien. Get me a younger Casper Van Dien. Who's Casper Van Dien? And, and you put any actors, put every actor's name in that except for Tom Cruise. For right. some reason, he's an enigma. Mm -hmm. um, it's just cast, get, cast him now, <laughs> get him right now. Um, but there's, you know, there's a few actors that, that, that defy all logic and, and have that. But for the most part, that's, that's what it is for everybody. Mm -hmm. And, and eventually, I think that would even catch up with him. I doubt it, because I think he does a fantastic job. But a lot of, so my recommendations for people, if you want to do it, you got to commit 100%. You got to do the work. It's, it's, a, it's a job like any other job. If you want to be like successful basketball player, you got to do the work that Kobe Bryant or Michael Jordan or any, any of them have ever done. You, you got to do the work. The same with acting. Because if I don't do all the work I do, somebody else is going to come in and do it. And if I want a job, I'm going to do everything I can to get that job. I'm going to study everything. I'm going to read everything I can on it. I'm going to uh, watch every film I can on it. I, I literally am. It's just what I do. Right. Uh, when I played Doolittle just recently, which hasn't come out yet, I, I read up on him. I looked him up. But I also had seen him in military school and grew up with that. And I'd also seen the film. So I rewatched them again with the, the two other actors that played it, Spencer Tracy and Alec Baldwin. So I, I, re, I just watched it. And, you know, it's like... It, it, it had nothing to do with our film, really, except for that similar speeches, um, but I got to say his real speeches. Right. But I even watched what I could on that. And then we talked to other people. I met one of the people that was on the ship with him. Just things you got to do. Mm -hmm. When I was James Dean, I did that, too. I went back and, stayed, and met his family, hung out with his family for a week in Fairmount, Indiana. I you know, read the the read all, uh, all the books I could on him, watched his three films over 30 times each, watched all 30 episodic TV spots he did. Smoked the same cigarettes he smoked. Uh, listened to music I read that he listened to. Uh, watched his home movies. Looked at his pictures. Went and talked to people that worked with him. The mechanic that worked on one of his cars. Um, different people in the business that worked with him. Uh, uh, a person that had repped him. I went and did all that research all before I did the film. Yeah. Well, thank you so much for everything you've offered here today. I love you. I love you guys. Me too. <laughs> Well, thank you so much, Willa, for no, your time today. You. I really appreciate it. I, I feel like I've learned a lot sitting here. I hope all of you have learned a lot today.